physical strength. So, you know. <clears throat> and he's also comes in the form of Nityananda Prabhu, who is. The problem is, when we Guru. say Hare Rama, Radharani does not have a relationship with Bhava. You know, that's where the snag would be, I suppose. It's a wonderful explanation, but how do you handle the Hare part? Uh, well, did it both uh, Krishna's energy, are they not? Or is it that they must ha have some sort of interaction because they're, they're you know, uh, right next to each other? Well, I think so far your explanation is the best. We need to look at it. Good. Well, so I we'll guess find out what I, I'm going by what I remember hearing a, a quote from Srila Prabhupada. Uh, I believe, to the best of my memory. He said? So he was referring to uh, Balaram. Okay. That's a good thing. I think we have to look it up. That's a good... good. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Go ahead. You, you, you hit us for the hitting is good. Here we are chanting the Hare Krishna mantra for decades, and we can't answer the key question that you have, which means somehow or other, without knowing how you did it, you became more spiritually advanced than we are. John. I, yikes, how did that happen? Yikes. <laughs> we don't know the most simplest thing. I actually, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe because of his association He's able, Sorry, made, able to make major leaps and bounds in spiritual advancement. Haribo. And what, what about our scholarly friend from the island? Mauritius, he hasn't joined yet. He got the message. Bhanu got the message. Bhanu should be coming on soon. Yeah, he said he was waiting. Did you, Ramachandra? Ah, Prabhu. Did you get a chance to speak with Chidananda Prabhu? Yes, I, I, I sent him a message and I called him just before speaking to the devotees here. He, he didn't pick up. So either he's busy or he's avoiding me or us. I don't know uh -huh. what's going on. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. I, I, I'm, this is just a speculation. He could be busy. Who knows? You know, right? But yeah. Well, according to what? what I'm, 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 what was our brother? Uh, Abish? Is it? Vashish. Uh, Vashish. Vashish. Yes. Yeah, Vashish seemed to think that he was avoiding us because he disagrees with what we're after, that he simply wants to do a call program and is not interested in what we're talking about. But it sounds as though that he and Chidananda, Vashish and Chidananda, have a history together of, are we on? Are we on? Yeah, we're on. We're on. Yeah, that that, enjoy. that yeah that he, that they have a history together that we may not know anything about. Right, right. Okay. Any, anyways, Narayan Prabhu, this picture that is on Mahaprabhu's uh, wall, uh, who's that? That's you and who else is there? Is that Jay Pataka in the background? Good God, no. Who is it? Isn't that... Who is it? Um... Yeah, okay. who is that? Just Come out. where you're looking, left or right. I'm looking at the top left. That, that is Tamal, right? Top left. That's Tamal, yeah. And you are on the left. The most left. On the right. In, you're on the right with the cell phone in your ear? That's you? That's not a cell phone. They hadn't been invented yet. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I a cell phone. I yeah. No, it's a hearing so aid. I, I, not even that. It's <laughs> the absence of a hearing aid. In the old days, when you were singing in the choir, and you, you might be singing off key because you're singing, but you can't hear what you're singing. So the, the oh. choral conductor would say, Put your hand over your ear, and you will, of course, be able to hear what everyone else is singing. It's loud, but then you'll be able to hear yourself 
and tell if you are in key or not. Couple that was the fact that I had been deaf for almost five years at the time of prosthetra. Not deaf. Well, hearing impaired. Not deaf. Okay. How would so you, that's what, what, what would you say? How would you define this? <laughs> deaf hearing means in, deaf means incapable of hearing anything. Is that right? 1969. Yeah. Wow. And I built that. I built that throne behind Prabhupada, and I built the Rathiatra car that it's on. You can't see the car, but it's got a big. It's got a big cloth dome that goes up. Mm -hmm. So, so who's right next to you on the left? You're on the right. And that right is next a devotee from Argentina. I'm trying to remember his name. He, he was a strange dude. He kind of looks like you too. You know that? Uh, Good uh, God, that's horrifying. No, I'm, I'm serious, see right? You should see him. No, you should see him in person. He looks like he is a uh, Mongolian Indian. And who's behind him? Some what African American. Behind, behind him is Srila Prabhupada. No, no, behind the Mongolian guy. Not the, the one. The Mongolian guy is the one standing next to me. And the, you're talking about the guy with the, the cloth over his shoulder. Oh, no, the, the, the one behind him. The one with the cloth over his shoulder is not the Mongolian guy. Oh, 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 okay. So who is he? I'm trying to remember. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. You have name problems, right, right. I, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm very d dyslexic. Yeah, but Tamal is there. I can see Tamal. Yeah. Okay. The devotee on my immediate right ended up taking sannyas and went to Argentina and married a famous home movie star. Mm -hmm. And the family owned some very prosperous pharmacies. And they, by his advice, they sold everything, lost all their money, and became dirt poor. And he met, and he gave up sannyas and married the actress. Oh, what? Therefore, <laughs> he lost a great deal of respect, which I never down. really had for him to begin with. Wow, acha acha. I knew. I think he came up for Rafiatra from Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I don't remember his name though. He, he, later on, he left the movement and became, posed himself as a highly educated PhD sort of commentator on Krishna consciousness from a very negative point of view. Oh, acha, acha. But he wasn't. He was not educated at all. Just pretending. That. Mm -hmm. It looks like you know who uh, Andre Jolica is? He's a French Canadian. He's constantly criticizing Trilla Prabhupada on YouTube. Yes, yeah. that's him. Oh, <laughs> then, then, yeah. Do you, know, a, do you remember he, his name? His name is, was well, his Carmi name is Andre Jolica, like Henry jo Jolica. Uh, and his, his spiritual name? I don't know his spiritual name, but. Because he, well, I think he might have mentioned it once or twice, but he's constantly um, trying to find fault with Srila Prabhupada. And that's the guy. That's the guy. That's and him? He's trying to post himself. Yes. He's trying to post himself he as the same. an intellectual. And he is the opposite of intellectual. His oh, wow. intelligence is around his belly button. What? He's, he's good friends with Henry Dordorsky. Dordorsky or whatever his name is. He's good friends with him. Is he really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's him. Oh, now it makes sense. He, he looks like that, yeah. too. But at that wow. time, he was just a brahmachari who was dull and couldn't answer any questions in class. <laughs> oh, that's him. Wow. Yeah. Andrew, I, Andrew, I saw his... Prabhu, you I you figured like, it out, buddy. So familiar. Said, right. You, you, you really hit the cool. nail on the head. 
It's this true about. I gave you a few <laughs> clues, but you did a brilliant job of figuring it out. Yeah, wow. Amazing. Yeah, I can't remember his name. Something or other, Swami, he became. Yeah, yeah. He, he was saying that he, he was a Swami. I think he mentions it in one of his videos that uh, his spiritual name, he's, he's always talking about how Srila Prabhupada, um, like the child abuse in his con and this and that, you know, Srila Prabhupada stood by and did nothing and such and such like that. I'm like, uh, you know, he's only one person with one opinion. And... No one cares about him. He's a karmi. And... Right. <laughs> See, Prabhupada and didn't just stand by. I mean, what did he expect he was going to do? He was, he's a guru. You approach the guru and ask questions. The guru doesn't chase you around with a stick and make you do things. If he thinks that, then he's way off track. The real problem is Prabhupada made very clear instructions, told them to do it, and they did something entirely different. And when people came to Prabhupada, uh, ladies also came to Prabhupada, men came to Prabhupada and talked about it. Prabhupada called all the Gurukul teachers in and roasted them alive in Bombay. Oh, he but, roasted but, them alive? Wow. Well, not literally, but I mean... I know. Yeah, he, a bunch of sannyasis and senior men and all that, and he chastised them. He didn't just chastise them. He ripped them to shreds in front of the woman that had squealed on them. You saw that? You saw that with Joe Nice? No, no, no. I read about it. I read about it. Okay. There was a, a, a woman wrote some accounts of her experience with Prabhupada and the Gurukulis, and I, it might have been I don't think she wrote, she might have written a book, but I'm not sure. But uh, you see, for me, it's a very nauseating thing. I have a tremendous horror of any form of mistreatment of children, physical mistreatment, what to speak of sexual mistreatment, emotional mistreatment. I have just got a horror of it. I would so not raise myself in a highly abusive atmosphere but it was really a very unpeaceful atmosphere. And I was mm. caught in the middle of it. My brother and I were just like little refugees in the middle of warring adults. Our mother Between... and father. Oh, okay, I see. Warring adults. Okay. <laughs> so from that, I became absolutely disgusted by the potential of harming children. I never even identified that I had been through a traumatic childhood uh, because nobody beat me up. I was very seldom hit by my parents and mm -hmm. no, certainly no sexual molestation, nothing like that. But they were just so highly tuned, very strong pair. My mother being a Puritan coming down from the, just after the Mayflower, my father coming from the Warsaw ghetto, they're marrying with no path of communication that resonated with any life experience either of them had either experienced or even heard of. So my dad wow. had no idea what it would be like to have descended from, from a Puritan. He, as an artist, he looked at it very, as a very captivating notion, but it had no emotional connection with it whatsoever. And my mother, being a strict Puritanistic type, uh, could not understand my father's Jewish uh, emotionality plus his raw prophetic genius. So, I mean, they admired each other tremendously, but, uh, but they didn't, they had, they had no basis of com communication beyond art and that ended when they finished their government projects in the 1930s. So they divorced they, at a time or 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 no? They never they never divorced. Oh well, they never but, divorced okay. But after I was five they lived apart more and more. And then my dad would live in what was his workshop and I would live in what was before the house. And 
there was almost like a wall of uh, a wall of impenetrable wall <coughs> between the house and the workshop. Oh, your emotional wall. Your your and your father I, was. But I would uh, walk in and meet with my uh, father. I'd come back out again, but never discuss what was discussed with my father. It was that heavy duty. How oh, does uh, they, oh, how, does Krishna, they, how does Krishna oh, see divorce? It's not possible. It's not possible? Well, it's when a woman marries her husband, if her husband dies, she should not remarry. She should remain faithful to the... You see, when a woman marries a man, there is a dharmic connection between them. And I'm talking about Krishna conscious parents. I'm not talking about people that meet in college and get married, and whatever, you know what I mean? Uh, so it's not talking about our youth or our own activities. I'm talking about the Krishna conscious marriage. The woman looks at her husband as though he's Vishnu. And even if he is bad, even if he falls down, she honors him as though he were Vishnu to her. And even if he mistreats her, she treats him as though he were Vishnu. And the result of that is, even if he doesn't do well at the time of death, she does. Because she has maintained her faith in the process of verticality that she to her husband, her husband to the guru, guru to Krishna. Mm -hmm. Wow, amazing so system. How, yeah, what, what, how, what if he, what if he mistreats her? What I'm if sorry? he mistreats her? Well, that's unfortunate. But, uh, I mean, you know, there's a lot of things women can do if they're mistreated. But generally, in Indian culture, even if a man mistreats his wife, he doesn't do it like they're all sitting on the TV, watch, sitting on the couch watching TV and he gets up and slugs his wife in the face. It's a much different and more subtle way of mistreatment because she will be in charge of the kitchen and the children and taking care of things. He will be in charge of whatever he does. If he has an alcohol problem or something like that, he may get abusive. He may get sexually abusive or physically abusive. But it's not the way it is in America where people are just absolutely out of their skins in terms of being wild. No, it's just, you know, that's, that's the question, you know, and I'm not applying this to anything you may be going through or have gone through in the past, or I've been through or been through in the past, because after all, I'm simply an American guy who took initiation from a pure devotee of the Lord. But um, in, the, <clears throat> in the case there, the woman will make her own spiritual advancement by raising her children to honor their father and mother and to raise their children to be devotees of Krishna. Uh, an example is that I think one of Prabhupada's aunts or sisters or something of that sort married Aunt, a man. Sister, a sister, sister. Yeah, I was trying to avoid that. But anyhow, sister uh, uh, married a man from no doubt a good family but it turned out he was an alcoholic, became an alcoholic, and he mm -hmm. was abusive. And he right. used to treat her badly, neglect her. I believe he used to hit her sometimes. And this went on for, for decades. At some point, sort of a bolt of lightning hit him, and he started weeping and fell down at her feet and begged her for forgiveness. And from that point onward, they went on. They went on in their spiritual life. So you can see it's a very different sense of what marriage is than we have in America, where it's sort of like uh, stray cats and stray dogs. I mean, people getting married are not even like at a dog show or a cat show. <laughs> they, I mean, they're not trying to breed the best of the best. They just breed whomever they please. 
Yeah. You know. So how how can we how can we evaluate a thing? The the best you can hope for is they by accident stumbled onto a good astrological combination so that they will not be in love when they're 18 and hate each other when they're 30. That's mm -hmm. sometimes just planetary movements. They, you go in and out. The best thing is when the husband and wife have planetary structures that accompany them to each stage of their life. You know, first year, 10th year, 20th year, 30th year, 40th year, 50th year, 60th year, 70th, 80th. Mm -hmm. and, they stay, and they stay in harmony by their astrology and by their piety, their goodness in their hearts. You know, being... I mean, I'm talking as of all people that get married are very bad people, but, uh, and often they are. But the thing is that in this case, uh, we're talking about people that might have a good moon compatibility, lunar compatibility, compatibility heart to heart compatibility, that's where the moon is like. And they um, will go on in life, going through thick and thin, different astrological periods, some more favorable than others, and try to stay together and try to keep their heads above water. And if they're devotees, chanting Hare Krishna and worshiping Lord Krishna and training their children to do the same. Mm. You, see, you see, when the Gurukula was established, the people that became Gurukula teachers were not good parents. Many times they were not even parents. Some of them were homosexuals, you know, and they were pedophiles and they wanted to become teachers in order to take advantage of the children as pedophiles often do in private right. schools and places like that. The, the English private schools, uh, which they call public schools for some strange reason, not government schools, but private schools called public schools, uh, Often the children were physically and sexually molested in those schools. David Niven, the actor, describes the horrors of being raised in a Irish parochial school run by nuns and how he was molested as a child mm -hmm. for years, decades. If, well, there's no way out. There's no exit strategy for that. Mahaprabhu so, does. So Mahaprabhu, does that help you at all? Absolutely. Make me dance. <laughs> yes. That, that is the solution. Make me dance. Yes. You know, that I invite, I request, if I had the authority and the power, I would order each one of us to take up Make Me Dance, because then we can talk sensibly amongst each other. Why? Because Paramatma is not going to delude Paramatma to Paramatma for another Paramatma. We mm -hmm. each have an individual Paramatma. It's not like it's all one, and if you say Make Me Dance, there's only one Paramatma for everybody who says that. No, there's a, <laughs> each Jiva has his own Paramatma who he's been abusing for deck, for lifetimes after lifetimes. Why? Because if he's a dog, he wants all the dog things and asks Krishna in the heart for dog things. Krishna knows he's pure spirit soul, but the person asking for dog things is, but the dog doesn't know he's pure spirit soul. He thinks he's a dog. He identifies firmly with his body. He says, give me rats to eat. Give me a female bitch to bitchified with and, you know I mean he, he just wants to do dog stuff and Paramatma shows him how to do it because a dog take away Paramatma and leave the jiva in the heart of the living entity that would be literally Karatanya if, if we were not being guided by Paramatma in terms of complying with our material desires bodily desires or our spiritual desires by saying make me dance, we would be 
kind of funny. We wouldn't be able to do anything because we wouldn't know how. We say, well, I have went to college. I know all sorts of stuff. Well, you only learn that stuff because of Paramatma. He is the one that helps you progress to a high grade or a low grade or failing grade or some other grade. Paramatma is the one, is the intelligence. Well, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, I am the intelligence of man. So Paramatma is the intelligence of the living entity. And the, and the living entity has his own intelligence, but it's not that intelligent. It's because it's completely soaked into his body. So if I have a mosquito intelligence, it's not up there with Einstein ever. You know what I mean? So it's, it's not up to us? Well, it's up to us in the big picture, yeah. We don't have to take birth as a mosquito. But if we do take birth as a mosquito, there's no way out because a mosquito can't chant Hare Krishna. He can't become a vegetarian. He drinks blood. I mean, the mosquito has no way to make spiritual advancement except by the inevitable way of making spiritual advancement. And that is the mosquito makes spiritual advancement by taking another part of body after the mosquito body. And he keeps on going and going and going until he becomes eventually a, a reptile, a slug, a spider, a, a, and then maybe some sort of mammal and advancing up the mammalian scale to my rats becomes a cat because he's tired of getting eaten by cats and then he becomes a dog because he's tired of being chased by dogs and then he goes up from dog he may become a, a donkey he may become a donkey becomes a horse the horse becomes a cow the cow becomes at some cows become human beings Unfortunately, in our cow, cow pastures, or not pastures, slaughterhouse entry gates, the cows are not evolving to be humans. They are humans that devolved to become cows because they went to McDonald's and now they're going to be eaten at McDonald's. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's, why take, that's why taking up Krishna consciousness is so absolutely vital because it eliminates your karmic reactions that you took before you understood that you are not this body but that your spirit soul. I mean, I that's the, that, yeah, that's it. That's the basic idea of initiation. But let's say initiation can be accomplished by verticality, by simply finding no fault with the pure devotees, Srila Prabhupada. If you, if you fi have some doubts about Prabhupada, then you're not initiated even if you had a fire sacrifice. And if you have no doubts about Prabhupada without a fire sacrifice, then you're initiated. Okay. Initiation means accepting your spiritual master as he is, 100%. I mean, we can make dramatic statements like if Prabhupada told me to leap under a bus, would I do it and be crushed? Well, the right answer is yes. But if, a, if Prabhupada asked me to sign the direction of management and I decided not to, is that all right? The answer is no. <laughs> you know, you have to obey the spiritual master. And you have to obey your own word if you write it down as a vow on a legal document. So, the, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna is right. Uh, do you have another question? Or, I I'm mean, good. Mahaprabhu, yeah. Does, does that help you with your question? Absolutely. Now, if a person is married 
to a non-devotee, and that non-devotee doesn't have a strongly dependent feeling on her husband, and could do just as well. Maybe she's a lawyer or something, could go out and make her money fixing parking tickets or something. That's me. And you get and and oh yeah, and divorce is there. It's not the same as Vedic divorce. If if there are children, that has to be taken into account. What I mean is birth children or any children. Children are the harvest of tomorrow. You know, they are the ones who inherit the earth. And so we need to protect them and guide them so that they are not traumatized by the activity of parents. So we need to protect them. But in the event of a woman wanting to divorce her husband or simply losing interest in being married, you can stay married or not married. It really makes very little difference unless you are committed to the path of Krishna consciousness, which means the progressive values of life. Progressive values of life. Bit by bit, you're making steps back to home, back to Godhead, and breaking up with your wife or husband is not part of that process. It doesn't prevent that from occurring, going back to Godhead, but it certainly is not a plus, it's a minus in terms of going back to Godhead. It's a disturbance and it is a negative that disempowers your spiritual life to some degree or another. So everyone must think it through for themselves how to handle that. And um, right. so that's hopefully, is that an okay addendum, uh, Mahaprabhu? Yeah, very, very fair and just answer. I mean, uh, it, it resonates with what Prabhupada says. And uh, Prabhupada didn't want divorce among his disciples. And uh, I can see that my parents, they've been together. I'm 35 now, so they've been at least together for 38 years, um, at least. And the other day at the Bank of America, I met a couple who's, uh, the husband is 91 and the wife was probably also in, in her 80s or 90s. They had been married or they have been married for 68 years. Wow. Yes. Well, that, that is, that's, that's wonderful. And it gives them merits in their next yeah. life. And, and I they can probably see that... not only knew each other in their previous lives. Yeah, and uh, he was explaining certain things, how the men and women's brains are totally different and the women, uh, you know, they have some kind of analytical mind. And, you know, he was going into the whole details about the science of, you know, how to stay married and this and that. I was like, wow. You know, he was giving his experience, you know, his uh, two cents. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's better than going to a uh, divorce marriage counselor, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was like Probably, 68 years. Hmm? Was Prabhupada married? Yes. Yes. I don't know the story. He, he had four children, two boys and two girls, was it? Yes, something like that. At least two boys, I know. When he came oh, to America, he left everybody in India. Well, that raises an entire different question, but one that you have heard the answer to in the course of these meetings, or presumably you have, if you are in on those particular meetings, and that is the Kinnist Adhikari, and Parvati was not a Kinnist Adhikari, but a societal member of the person who is a devotee of Krishna getting married Ideally, he's maybe 25 and his wife is 15 or you know, 10 years younger. Uh, and as they grow, they 
Well, together, the woman is, uh, in Prabhupada's day, the woman would invariably be a virgin. Mm. And so when she has sex, the thing I've learned about women, because I've had experience with virgins and non-virgins, and that is the, the virgin has no previous experience, but the, non, but the non-virgin is always comparing you to the other guys involuntarily, either voluntarily if she's like that, or involuntarily simply because she has had another experience before you. Mm-hmm. Well, is this or many experiences in some cases. Right, right. So that, that's the awkward situation. Um, but um, but Srila Prabhupada got married. His wife was undoubtedly a virgin, just barely reaching puberty. And they had their children. And they stayed together. Prabhupada wanted to take a second wife because he never wanted to marry his first wife. He wasn't really attracted to her and find her attractive. Mm-hmm. And he wanted to take a second wife who was a girl that he thought was attractive, but uh, his father told him not to do it. He said, you're not being attracted to your wife will help you in the end. Mm-hmm. And so what happened? They raised the children and she and he did not resonate completely, nor did the children resonate completely. They were, you know, impacted by their mother a lot, as we have seen sometimes occurring, always occurring actually. And so when Srila Prabhupada get to a certain age, in the Kanista Adhikari civilization, the man, after the children are grown, he takes Vanaprastha. And he and if the children are old enough, they can take over the family business. And the husband and wife can go traveling to holy places, or the man can go traveling and the woman can stay back with the family and be protected by her sons, presumably. So Prabhupada took Vanaprastha, then he took sannyas after that, because his wife was fond of drinking tea, which in Prabhupada's strict upbringing was not acceptable. And he actually went to his wife and famously said to her, tea or me? <laughs> and Evidently, she chose tea. Right. So he, he packed his bags, took fun of Prasta, left his family, you know, with prosperity, and went yeah. out as a penniless monk, as a Vana Prasta, and went to live in his godbrother Keshava's ashram, and then some years later took sannyas, and then uh, at Kishima's ashram, and then he went to live at Radha Damanar Temple, where he b- began writing the Srimad Bhagavatam and the Bhagavad Gita as it is. And he also printed his Indian version of the magazine, Back to Godhead. And Back to Godhead, in black and white, was a magazine he printed. He had difficulty with no money because he had pronounced everything. With no money, he had to get donations and he would print up enough Back to Godhead magazines. In those days, you know, printers set the type and printed and bound everything in their shop. It wasn't like today's massive printing or Xeroxing and stuff like that. So he would go around to tea stalls and sit down, not drinking tea, with people that were drinking tea and show them the magazine and they would buy the magazine from him and he would get enough money to accumulate after selling a bunch of magazines to print the next edition. So um, that's what he did with Back to Godhead magazine. When he came to America, we started a Back to Godhead magazine and I don't remember which year, but I think it was 1967, the first Back to Godhead magazine came out in color with incredible illustrations and articles by Prabhupada, and it continued on. Uh, it ended up a monthly magazine printed out every month for years and years and years. It's still in print. 
but I don't think it's monthly. I mean, mm -hmm. But whatever, it changed from what I thought it should be, which was a, what you call it, what, what are they called? This newspapers of the old days um, where you have contrasting ideas when you, you, you come out with radical views and publish them and then distribute them and it's meant to shock or stimulate people's thinking. Um, broadsides, broadside magazines. Broadside means, you, you know, broadside is a ship term that you have cannons all along your sailboat. You turn the sailboat sideways and shoot. Well, you can shoot like 20 or 30 cannons from the side of the boat. And that's called a broadside. It means you're really shooting to destroy. So a broadside magazine is a magazine designed to destroy. And that's what Prabhupada started his magazine as. And I always thought that Dr. Godhead, and I was the art editor for Dr. Godhead, but the editor saw through didn't want anything to do with controversies. And so I was almost trying to goad him into saying we should have this magazine taking up the issues, abortion, politics, uh, cow slaughter, all of these things. And he said, no, it should be more like a, like a club magazine where we show how we're taking care of cows and this man married that woman and they have these children and stuff like that. <laughs> Just make it look like a sales pitch for joining the temple rather than a weapon against Maya. Um, so if we ever got a chance if the league ever gets a chance, or we could publish our own league of 10,000 years back to Godhead. Thanks. And um, and do exactly that, write broadsides against, I mean, right now, can you imagine what we could be writing? It would be blood curdling. Call it 10,000 <laughs> 10, years to Godhead. <laughs> yeah. So we could do that. It would be great. Try. So so anyhow, I I hope. Oh yeah. So Srila Prabhupada to finish it. Srila Prabhupada took sannyas, and after taking sannyas, a few years later, he came to America. And the rest is, as they say, history. Try. Mahaprabhu Does it make sense? Das. Mahaprabhu. How you like it? Uh oh, he ran, ran off. No. And Ananda Prabhu, do you have any questions regarding any of this discussion material? Yeah, well, I have a comment. Um, Go ahead. I think it's kind Regard of like it's, it's regarding the Back to Godhead, um, how Satswarup was managing, yes. overseeing that operation. And then I yes. remember seeing years later um, as he, when he became a, a guru a so called guru uh, and he was being confronted on, on video they were doing an, an ex uh, some devotees they were you know saying that Prabhupada was being poisoned and they, they were going on video like they're recording and, and uh, just interacting and you know, trying to coax these swamis, and you know, uh, but um, they were distributing this magazine called Back to Prabhupada. Uh huh. And so I think it's I just find that uh, quite ironic that he was managing uh, Swatswarup was managing Back to Godhead, and then some decades later he he was not uh, adhering to Prabhupada's directions. And so there was another magazine being distributed and yes, to, back to Prabhupada. Yes. Yeah, yeah, to um, you know, contradict uh their uh their establishment. No, no, no Prabhu, you're muted. Please unmute yourself. That's rare. <laughs> I muted you, no, I'm just kidding. You muted yourself. <laughs> oh, sorry. No way. Yeah. It's unfortunate so, that. Back to Prabhupada magazine came out to discuss 
the issue of Prabhupada being poisoned and the disobedience, general disobedience of Prabhupada within ISKCON. I, I helped, helped found the magazine in 1995. And I had a three-story house in Marina del Rey, which is sort of a cushy part of town. And in that place, we had a meeting with probably 85 devotees crowded into my living room and dining room with Krishna Kant speaking, who was the founder of Bhakti Prabhupada magazine. And we had a, there was a Masonic hall next to the Iskon temple. And we had a huge uh, festival, a few hundred people came to it, a big Istagosti. And uh, we went into the main Masonic hall, which was pretty cool energy. I mean, uh, and we had a three-sided, uh, like a three-sided poster board. So it was like triangular, if you look at the top with a picture, the same picture of Prabhupada on all three sides. Right. And that meant that we all sat in a circle, everyone was facing Prabhupada because he was, Prabhupada was in the middle of the circle. And that's how our Istagusti took place. And I even wrote an article on, on can Iskand survive without Istagusti and which was presented there at that meeting. So that was a pretty prominent meeting uh, amongst all the big devotees, I guess. The big, uh, you were there, Yashoda was there. Who else was there? A lot um, of these. Puranjana was there? No. Oh, of course. Oh, he was there. Okay. Yeah. So after that meeting. And, and you know who else was there? Who? Madhu, Madhu Pandit was there. Oh, Madhu was there too. Okay. Wow. He was a, he was a skinny young guy at that time. Acha. And also the guy in Ohio was there. The Ohio? guy that just wrote, huh? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, that's uh, um, um, uh, what's yeah, his him. name? Veda Guya's friend. Uh, yeah. He's in, he's, in, uh, he, he's in North Carolina, in a Prabhupada village. What's his name? Uh, no, him, no right? this guy is in Ohio. No. If you, a hundred miles, uh, half about eighty miles north of Los Angeles. Oh, Mahesh Vasha, or oh, Maheshwar, or whatever his name is. My, Maheshwar, Maheshwar. Mahesh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that guy. He seems like a little kind of rascal guy. You know, he's taking the sides of the uh, uh, conspirators, saying that Prabhupada was not poisoned. You know, he's he's pro. Yeah, he's, he, he's a very intelligent guy. He spent a career working for the Navy as a career <clears throat> guy in a place called Wainimi, uh -huh. uh, which is on the coast of uh, near Ventura. Mm -hmm. And he got that place and he was married and he got the, his wife divorced him and ran okay. screaming out the door saying nothing <laughs> nice about him. Uh -huh. And um, then he got into different relationships and I think maybe married once or twice again. Acha. But uh, he's with an Indian lady right now. Oh, yeah. He's with an Indian lady but, right now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. At, at that meeting, he was off, off base also. He, he, he's very, you know, mathematically acute. But when I went there with, you know, with Rupa Manjari, my final wife, uh -huh. uh, we went up there and he said, you can lead Kirtan. He didn't come to the Kirtan. He said, but you can lead Kirtan. Uh, and he was cooking the feast. Uh, you can lead Kirtan, but don't expect them to dance. They never dance. So oh. we led we led the Kirtan in my style, which is to start the Kirtan, get it roaring, and then get everyone to go around the circle leading the Kirtan. At his you know? program. At his at program. His, at his, oh. well, it was, it, it program in his house. It was okay. basically our program because he wasn't even there in the room. But okay. anyhow... We started chanting, and then everybody was dancing wildly. Huh? Where Where was he? He was cooking. I think so. Yeah. Acha, acha, acha. He doesn't like me very much. Who is this? Well. And I don't blame him. 
<laughs> if I were him, I wouldn't like me either. Wait, which devotee is this? Mayashwara. Mayashwara. Not yeah. Like... So anyhow, we, my wife at the time and I were extremely pleased. She leads a wonderful kirtan. And we were extremely pleased that they were all dancing in ecstasy. But he assured us that no matter what happened, they wouldn't do that. Wow. Guy. Yeah. So what, so what is his philosophy or what does he believe? He believes what? That Prabhupada was not poisoned or did he have a conversation regarding that or nothing like that? Do you understand a person like myself, specifically not like myself, but a person being myself, if you cannot have a, what I would consider in my own vain way, to be a Krishna conscious conversation with Siddhanta, with conclusions, with outcomes and plans for action, then I don't want to hear what the heck he has to say. Then why you even go to his program then? I mean. He invited us to come and do the program. Oh, so we did. invited us. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. we were invited to come up and lead the kirtan and give the class. Acha, acha, acha. It's sort of like we were the, um, the, the traveling oh, show or the, the um, huh. you know, like, the latest act on the on the vaudeville stage or something of that sort. Mm -hmm. In other words, he couldn't just do it with his own people all the time. He wanted some fresh people to come in. He had lots of people come in to conduct programs. Acha, acha, acha. I see, I see. His place was like a, a meeting place and then he wanted to keep his people coming. Like he didn't have that many people, less than 30 people came to Sunday feast or whatever it was. <coughs> and um, how do you keep them coming every day, particularly in Ohio, where you have to drive over dangerous mountain roads, often in the rain, to get to the temple? You know? Anyways, uh, back to the uh, meeting. Yeah. Uh, when everyone was there, did you guys come up with a conclusion or what happened with that? I'm trying to get in. Which uh, meeting? In the, the, uh, the one at the Mysania call. Oh, well, did we come up with a conclusion? Everyone there was pretty much on the same path. My brother was there. Uh, oh, watch out. And wow. um, there was a I think he was there. And then there was a, uh, a the, the Malaysian people that ran the Hansaduda's case were there. Das well, was and her husband. Was Hansaduda there or no? No. Okay. No, he was in Berkeley. Or, or, or beyond Berkeley up there in Lake County. Um, oh, gotcha. And um, and did I say Gupta was there and his wife? Gupta so was I, there? Gupta? Yeah. Well, oh, remember, wow. he, that's, that was about when he was getting involved with the um, lawsuit, oh. the, BBT, the BBT case. Was Akura not there? Akura not or no? No. No, Akura not was not involved with the ISKCON temple in Los Angeles. Was uh, was the temple yeah, president there? Anyhow. Was uh, no, why was he, the is Savas. Savas, Savas no, was there or no? no? Savas was next door in the temple, holding a competitive program to prevent the temple devotees from coming to our program. Wow! Wow! Interesting. Yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> he was trying to do what? What was his political agenda? To keep the truth out? To, you know, to keep us. <laughs> well, we, well, we were talking about the book changes, which he yeah. was, he's dealing, BBT trustee, he is dealing with the authorizing book changes or working with the book changers yeah. and also poison issue. And he, of course, was not wanting to get involved with that. 
Mm-hmm. So, I mean, every, everything that Back to Prabhupada magazine has in it is basically what we were talking about there. Uh-huh. And Krishna Kant, of course, was speaking. Okay. And then there were a lot of ladies that were there. Wow. So. And I, I cooked. Uh-huh. You cooked at that feast? I mean, the program. I I cooked at my house in Marina del Rey. I I cooked 35 trays, or like one foot by two foot trays, 35 trays, one foot by two foot, filled with authentic goranga potatoes. Okay. Gotcha. Do you know goranga potatoes? I think I might have eaten it, but I'm not a foodie guy, you know. I I, I eat the prasad and... uh, Forget about yeah, it. You, would, you wouldn't have eaten it as well. You wouldn't have recognized it because they don't know how to make them properly. Acha, acha. But anyhow, I cooked them and they were, it was just gourmet. They were invented in Buffalo in 1967 by an astrologer and Sachi Suda, who is one of the Mott Street guys, and, um, and Karnapriya, who is an astrologer. Renegade. So that meeting went on for how long? A few hours, a few days, a few weeks? No, 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 no. no. It just went on, I think, totally maybe. I don't know if we had it for more than one day or not, but it it went on all day and late into the night for sure. Mm -hmm. It started probably around 10 in the morning and went until midnight. Wow. It didn't go so nearly what, as well as I wanted it to because okay. Karanjan grabbed the bike and tried to dominate the whole meeting with this endless, meaningless, rambling garbage. <laughs> <laughs> he does seem to ramble on, doesn't he? <laughs> I wanted it to be a realistic ghosty with all sorts of people talking, and he made that impossible for a large part of the state. There were a lot of people that had major issues that they wanted to bring up. And the whole idea of the Isigosi was, if you have any issues that were never addressed in ISKCON, here is the Isigosi where you can address them. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah, would you like me to read you the paper uh, on that Isigosi? Wow, you have it? Well, you didn't tell me that. Hi. I'd like to I'm see gonna, it. I'd like to hear it. I will yeah, mail are... it to you. I yeah, can probably, I now that I have my, my computer set up with a fax and my fax machine, I could probably just fax it to you. Yeah, just fax it to me or email it to me. Just, just take a snap with your camera and just send it like that. Just like you sent little, me the GIF little, photos. A little, a little hard to read. That way. No. Okay, here it I'll is. Zoom. Okay, go ahead. Okay, uh, actually, it has the agenda on the back. Oh, wow, Jai. That's right. It says on the back, oh, you want to see it? See it. Oh, wow, you have all that, Jai. That's Thank on the you. back. Uh-huh. It says, first annual is the ghosty, an open discussion amongst devotees to help bring unity to Srila Prabhupada's movement. Okay, first of all, what date was that? I don't know if the date is mentioned. Let's see. Let's see. It was 1995, but I don't know the exact date. Okay, 1995. Okay. All right, go ahead. All right, Prabhu. Yeah. And it says, and under the help bring unity, it says, Hear from the right source and discuss amongst yourselves. Dot, dot, dot. It's the ghosty. Then the perfection. Srila Prabhupada lecture on Srimad Bhagavatam, June 13th, 1969 in New Vrindavan, USA. Ah, wow. So I write here. How many pages is that document? How many pages? Well, I'm just reading the program on one side, and it's just one page. Okay. So I'm not going to take up the next 
few hours. And it says, who is invited? I write, everyone is welcome, exclamation point. GBC members, temple presidents, temple devotees, member of the ISKCON congregation, the excommunicated, the disenfranchised, <laughs> as well as the general public. <laughs> this is this is my style of writing. <laughs> then it says where and when, Masonic Hall, ninety six thirty five Venice Boulevard, Venice and Watsika, around the corner on Venice from the Sri Sri Rukmini Dwarkadish Temple, mm -hmm. Monday, August fifth, nineteen ninety six, eight fifteen a.m. to five thirty p.m. But it actually 1996. Yeah, you know, what? You said 1995, but in 1996. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, it says 1996. Well, maybe I wrote. That's interesting. It might have been. I thought it was the same year. I wrote the the this. I thought it was 1995, but it says 1996. One of them okay. may be a typo. Who knows? Topics. <laughs> okay. So it was one day. Number one. Morning session, healing the Gurukula generation. Breakfast discussion at 8.30 a.m. Sharing their concerns and asking them to join us in helping to plan a more Krishna conscious tomorrow for them, ourselves, and the world. Acha. Wow. This is all my writing, unfortunately. I wish it was everybody's writing. Two, a need for the further empowerment of women within the Krishna consciousness movement. There's mm. a lunch break. Okay. Re-evaluation of the vital but long neglected role of women within the Krishna consciousness movement. Wow. So women. Women, yes. They're treated like shit. Three, huh. afternoon session. Outside, in, outside influences. And then the comment. Have they undermined Srila Prabhupada's transcendental master plan for saving the world in its momentous hour of need? Question mark. Mm -hmm. Four. Where the Ritvik people are right, a discussion of a paper pa discussion of a paper presented by His Holiness Jai Dwaitis Swami, GBC spokesperson and editor of Back to Godhead magazine, dealing with the author's deep concern over the divisive and still unresolved issues surrounding the guru appointments. And that's interesting because I put it in, he's a bad guy, but I put it in because he wrote a paper what said where the Ritvik people are right and he's one of them. So you can't condemn us for putting that in, right? Okay, so yeah. uh, that paper, what is it? Or what's the conclusion of the paper? What was it? Do you remember? That's not, this is not a paper, this is a program. No, I know, but that paper that Jed Waiter wrote, what was it? Oh, uh, well, you can get it off online, it's there. Oh, where the Ritvik people are right, that's the title. Where where the Ritvik people are right, he wrote that, and he also wrote one called Where the Ritvik people are wrong. Okay. And this is early times, you know, early days. So then uh, the last item on Jed Waiter's paper, dealing with the author's deep concerned over the divisive and still unresolved issues surrounding our guru appointments. So you oh. see, I presented it neutrally like a scholar, but uh, obviously with my thumb on the scale. The Istagosti will end at 5.30 p.m. For those who wish to Continue discussion after the official program ends. Organized groups will meet in area homes. Locations to be announced. Acha. Et cetera. Mm -hmm. Okay. For more information, when the Istagosi, about the Istagosi, or to volunteer to help in the event, call 310 306 4629. My own phone number. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Now I've got to get into better light. Although I've had cataracts, which we had in order classes. My eyesight is not doing that well, which apparently does occur sometimes. What? What did you just say? 
Okay. Now, can I, may I read? Yes, yes. Now, this is the paper that was generally, I wrote it in 1995, and it says, excerpted from Ex Negoci magazine statement of purpose, but we never wrote the magazine. We just wrote this paper and never got to making the magazine. Okay. okay. It says, can Istagosti survive without Istagosti? Question mark. Huh. That's the same as on the other side. Then, are you ready? I'll read straight through unless you want to stop and discuss anything, okay? No, Vashish Prabhu is here, so it's good. The founding Acharya, founder Acharya of the International Society for Christian Consciousness is Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada instituted the process of his negoti even before the society he established was incorporated. It was his intent that the process of attending these communicative meetings continue into perpetuity as a vital part of the spiritual advancement of his disciples. Yeah. Although, although he advised us to create temples and ashrams that were based on strict hierarchy of authority, such as is found in a military academy, he nonetheless requested that we simultaneously institute a process that would create an arena in which doubts could be openly expressed. The opportunity to express doubt is an in an istagosti context is an indispensable and vital component of the process by which Vaishnavas reveal their minds to other Vaishnavas. In the sanctuary okay. of an istagosti meeting, there is no question of rank. Whatever authority one has been granted in order to function in a management or political capacity within this gun must be understood to be irrelevant to one's spiritual advancement and be dropped before the session of Istagosti can begin. Like the round table of the legendary King Arthur, Istagosti establishes a sense of mystical equality, which creates a climate in which openness and humility can grow. When such a group meets on a plenary level, openly and frankly discussing both scriptural and personal issues, the tendency to retain such personal flaws as insincerity and duplicity are reduced almost to nil. Uh. Since the productive result of the Itagosti product process is vital to the deliverance of the inhabitants of this planet during the next 10,000 years, comprising the golden age of Kali, it can be understood that higher beings, such as demigods, great yogis, as well as the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself, monitor such meetings and extend their blessings to the successful outcome of the issues discussed. Practicing is to go see on a global scale will naturally tend to create enclaves of sincere and realized devotees who will begin to savor the opportunity to regularly absorb a rich infusion of Srila Prabhupada's body while observing exactly how his association begins to saturate the context of their daily lives, unleashing the inherent goodness and loving nature that is the essence of the spirit soul. Such devotees will begin to thrive in each other's association, seeking one another out to share in their daily increase of spiritual realization. The process of this Tagosi promotes the development of spiritual consciousness at the grassroots level so that the urgent message of Lord Chaitanya can be successfully instituted into any, every home and dwelling, spread to every town and village. This process cannot be taught in large classroom situations to a passive student body, nor by blindly and unquestionably following ambitious and oligarchical leaders. A true Vaishnav society can never be achieved until each and every disciple of Srila Prabhupada is well-versed in the conclusions of Guru, Shastra, and Sadhu, and has built a high level of individual commitment through the introspective process of personal realization. Since the natural result of the Istagosi process is purity of purpose, and since we understand that purity is the force, then it becomes clear that the time and the effort spent during its ghosty meetings will reap rich rewards in the field of action as crippling self-doubt is systematically replaced with a clear 
human understanding of how to reach out to our suffering brethren and draw them close, closer to our heartfelt intimate discussions as they gradually yield up the torment of, torment of their material lives in exchange for the ever satisfying process of direct perception of the self by realization, everlasting, joyfully performed. Aye. That's it. Wow, that's very nice. Yeah, it's sort of like what we're doing, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Chai. I, have, I haven't read it in many years. Wow, it was the right but timing. I'll send it to you. Maybe we can make that part of our platform. Yeah, that's but great. But you use all it, this. It, you have done all if this. you think it's that good. But you see, I'm doing then. I was talking about then, which I am now with you, amongst you, calling for action on the platform of higher understanding. And I was realizing that in the ISKCON movement, people were getting duller and duller because they were simply being obedient instead of having a process for self-realization, which is epitomized by a weekly meeting of the Sagosti in every temple environment. Yeah, that's the problem here in Sacramento. Uh, they never had an Easter ghost street. They don't talk to devotees personally. Like you said in the uh, reading of that paper, it's just uh, these things are completely avoided. Uh, the gurus don't well, talk yeah. about it. The GBC don't talk about it. The, the presidents, the center leaders, none of these people actually talk about these issues openly. And they're very scared to tackle these issues because yeah. you know, they're... they're their false yeah. understanding will get challenged. And, uh, it'll... yeah, <laughs> well, in San Diego, there was a Sanyasi, uh, I'm trying to remember his name, nice devotee, he came from Buffalo originally. Oh. He took Sanyasi, he was living in a motorhome, but he got addicted to re to watching porno films. Uh -huh. Okay, now if he had been able to go to his to go see, and before he started watching porno films, let express his feelings about wanting to and then discussing it openly with people that were less than he was in rank, not Sanyosis, maybe just ordinary temple devotees and yeah. women and children, anybody that wanted to be there, he would have been able to possibly avoid that. But who can who the hell can that Sanyasi talk to? To his girlfriend. Yeah well that was uh, nice. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, he has no one. There's no one that he can talk to except maybe another sannyasi, which he has to be careful or that other sannyasi can bust him and take his land Nanda. And followers and, and still his Nanda. His what? His Nanda? <laughs> then, then he'll have two Nandas. Take his Three Nanda Dundas. and use it for roasting marshmallows over a campfire. <laughs> That's that's the problem if you don't uh, share and uh, you know your 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 you know your life's internal details. You know, it's uh, I mean. Well, well yeah. Well, the point of that is that it is a ghost. He, he could have talked to everyone. Yeah. Before it became a problem. Yeah, before it became a problem, right? <laughs> Try to remember his name. What's the day the guru? Don't run it came to us, came to stay in San Diego. Anyways, wow, right. Anymore. This this stuff you're bringing out, um, please keep doing like this, so we can. So, so we have an archival copy of of. Well, all I'd like videos. to send it to you, and maybe you could text or um, or email it to everybody the, else. Yeah, because uh, this is uh, very important. Once Ishta Goshti gets established, it'll change the whole ISKCON environment, the whole ISKCON temple centers, well, and they'll they'll they want they want it. I mean, if if they don't get it, then they'll protest. Yeah. If they protest, then things will change immediately. Well, Maybe. that's true too. That's the on the ground. Uh, yeah. But the way they used to, they had Ishta Goshti in Los Angeles temple, where Finnish Orkadish temple. And what would happen is the temple president would stand up on a microphone and everybody else would be sitting on the ground and he would be sort of like telling them what to think. 
<laughs> it wasn't. A, it wasn't a discussion at all. Of course, there'd be question and answers, but it wasn't like that. What we did. Many of the voters probably don't even have an, uh, an idea that they can like uh, every people can voters can speak freely as equals in a certain arranged organized space. You know. Yeah. They, they, exactly. They, yeah, as I pointed it, out, that you may have a big, you may have a hierarchical temple president or temple commander or all these different roles you're playing that give you a sense of importance in the temple. When you're in Disagosi, you leave that at the door and you're just a jiva trying to, a person trying to become the jiva instead of the body. Okay. <laughs> so I'm surprised that it looks like a, do you feel it was okay, well expressed? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, this is the model that every temple should use. It's pretty this eloquent. A, yeah, very nicely, very simple, very it's straightforward. Somewhat unheard of. And it does. We yeah. didn't discuss that Isagosi is a circle of cowherd boys and the Christmas present in the circle, but I did mention- But Yamagos it gave the idea Christian of that. So. Yes, yes, yeah. it gave that idea. Yeah. So, uh, Bhakta Nanda, what did you think? Does that ring? Of, does it resonate with you? Yeah. Um, it gives. Um, it's refreshing, you know, um, because, well, it, be, being that um, that that it's been uh, discussed at some point in ISKCON communities, because um, if like a person who, for instance only has experience with the temple such as uh, the Houston temple, there is a very clear and obvious hi hierarchy. And uh, there is not really much room for people to ask questions and speak out uh, with uh, things they disagree with or things that they believe are uh, uh, contradicting uh, Srila Prabhupada's orders, instructions, and intentions. Um, so, right. Yeah, that, that, that's a very nice, um, <clears throat> a very eloquent and nice uh, way to present uh, um, uh, yeah. an opportunity does two, to come and does, speak their minds. It does two things. It gives you a chance to speak out on issues but my intent was that you speak out on issues from the individual personal point of view, not from a political or group point of view. Our, our group believes this, our group believes that. No, it exactly. should be each individual speaking from his heart. Hi. Wow, this was done in 95, oh no, 96, huh? 96, 2006, 2016. 20 years. Like, like four years old at that time. <laughs> uh -huh. 96. Oh, little boy. Well, according to why I wrote the paper, you could have come to the Mr. Ghosty program and taken part. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Was, as far as I'm concerned, when I ran the art department up until 1980, uh, we had idea meetings. The idea meeting was largely composed of the artists themselves. It was like a Mr. Ghosty. And the artists would be sitting down. But sometimes other people would come in. And I wouldn't tell them, no, we are having a private meeting. You can't come in. We're discussing this meeting. We say, come and sit down. Take part in this meeting. Karmis would come in for one reason or another. They would come in because they wanted to know what this gun is doing with an art department and what are the artists doing and what is their art like and all that. I'd say, sit down, come in. Children would yeah. come in. A child would come in. I'd say, sit down, join in. Uh, so we would have the idea meeting with all sorts of people unrelated to the art department as well as the art department. Of course, the artists were key. They were the leaders because they knew what they, they wanted to paint the painting. But, we didn't, but the idea of the painting did not belong to the artist. The idea of the painting belongs 
to the perceiver of the pastime. Mm, 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 right. If there's a pastime, anyone can see that pastime. One, one of the more successful ones you may have seen if you were in, when you were in New York was one of Kamsa trying to kill his sister and Vasudev is trying to prevent it. And he's standing on a chariot and he's holding up his hand and, and, and Yavaki is cringing. Then there's a bunch of people middle of hand in the front foreground. Well, yes. That, yes. That, that was one of the choice outcomes of an idea meeting. Mm -hmm. And we actually had people stand in front on, on built up boxes uh, where they acted out that pastime as it went. And we sort of like were figuring at what point do we stop the movie? You know, the, movie, the pastime is going on and on and on from start to finish. And then we found the quintessential moment to stop the action. And we did not take photographs. We made sketches. I forbade photographs in the art department because you end up with making transcendental people that look suspiciously like humans. Uh, and if you've seen the, the Isopanishad with Vishnu, where you can look at up inside of his nostrils, are you familiar with that one? Um. I think so. I, I might have to see it too. Pink cover? It's a sort pink of a blue, blue cover with a pink lotus flower. And this is standing there with his head tilted back and you're looking up at his face and you can sort of see his nostrils. Hmm. You're talking about the Sri Ospanda? That's, that's, that's when I became, years before I became involved with the art department, that's when I realized I wanted to become involved with the art department because to me, it was intolerable. And then I found out who posed in a photograph to be painted as Vishnu by Jodorani. Who was it? A woman. Oh. <laughs> Can you imagine? The Supreme God. Male was shown as a woman. No problem with women, except for one detail. They're not Vishnu. They're Lakshmi, right. not Vishnu. <laughs> right. Lakshmi is a Shakti, has a much they don't resemble Vishnu. Huge, just as much potency as Vishnu, but not the same exact countenance and body vibration as right. Vishnu. You can't mm -hmm. take a woman and paint her as Vishnu unless you're Jadarani, of course. W women have a much softer countenance, and men are very chiseled, they're very, you know, pronounced yes. features. Exactly. So that bothered me because I had a background in art, but both my parents were known artists. You know, they painted frescoes in a number of places in San Francisco and got quite famous for doing it. And then they, my dad painted numeral paintings and my mother painted numeral paintings as well. And I grew up in the middle of all of that. Jai. Mahanu Prabhu, do you have any questions? Tons of artists. Banu is here. Banu. Hey, bro. Is... Banu is here. And Sri Anand Prabhu is here. Sri Anand is here too. Sri Anand Prabhu is here. He joined. Sri Anand Prabhu, looks, please give me your. He looks suspiciously like a tree. Uh -huh. Who's that? Sri Anand. Oh, there you are. You're not. You're not a tree. No, I just, yourself, Prabhu. I, I, don't yourself. Want to, I don't want to keep yeah, you're muted. Prabhu, you're sure in this? You're mute mute muted. Who's muted? Muted. Sing Hassel Prabhu. Sing Al Prabhu. You I'm unmute muted. yourself. Unmute oh. yourself. There you go. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah, Am you I give me your phone someone? number. Can you, can you keep Are your you head yeah. up? Higher, because all we can see, you look like you're wearing a COVID mask. All I'm wearing your shoes. Eyes. We can't see your face. Can you tip the camera down or sit on a stack of books or something so we can he's see your face? Tying, he's tying his shoelaces. Oh, he's tying his shoelace. Okay. Oh. 
So, Yans Prabhu, give me your phone number so I'll add you to our WhatsApp group. And then you can get the emails immediately when we start. Okay. You, you give it to me now, I'll add you. Send it to me now. No, no. I don't have a WhatsApp number now. Oh, you don't? Okay. Then you just follow us on... Uh, um, what, what messenger you have? You have Facebook? Yes, I have Facebook. Okay, send it to me. Send me the Facebook. I'll, I'll call you. Okay. Manu Prabhu, yeah, any questions? No. I'm good. No questions. Shri Yans Prabhu, any questions? Any questions? Mahaprabhu Das, any questions? Yeah, Prabhu, I wanted to ask something. Go ahead. Yes, yes. Welcome. Go ahead. When God has everything, so why do we offer him food and worship him? Just for our own benefit. So we can practice devotional service and, and receive purification through that process. Okay. Of course, God is a person. Right. He doesn't need anything from us. God doesn't mean individual. He he includes everyone. Mm -hmm. Each and every one of us. Okay. We're all part and parcel of Krishna. So when we worship Krishna, we are not only worshiping him, but we're worshiping our own nature as part and parcel of him. And that's what right. creates ultimately bhakti. Mm. Because you are you are you are of the same nature as Krishna in your real sense. In the body which we have all foolishly decided to have one, uh, that body is just filled with temporary occurrences that we take very seriously. And why do we take them seriously? Because we're eternal. Why would we take our body seriously if we're eternal? Because I'm eternal, I can't imagine the body is ever going to end. Why would the body end? I'm eternal, you know, because we misidentify. So that's why people are so unrealistic about birth and death. They, they're the soul and there's a disconnect. They're disconnected between who they consciously perceive themselves to be and the body in which they think they are that thing, the body. Does it make some sense? People yeah. are not treating body like a machine. Yeah, the body is a machine, but if you identify with it, yeah, I remember I was first exposed to that sort of idea when I was a kid. Uh, a friend of my mother's was driving a Model A Ford truck with a politi for a political rally, and she was driving, and she bumped into a guy's car. This was back in the 50s, 1950s. And he had a Buick, I think, something like that. And he stood there wringing his hands and looking at her, practically weeping and saying, you, you've damaged my chrome work. You've damaged my chrome work. I mean, as a child of maybe 10 years old, looking at him saying that, I was thinking, that's not his chrome work. It's the car's chrome work. But he's identifying completely as though it were his body that got hit. And so if my body gets hit, that's still not, it's still my chrome work. If my body gets hit, it's not me. I am not hit. My body is hit. I am independent of the cause and effect of hitting or getting damaged or injured or killed or any of that stuff. I'm independent from that. And that's self-realization. But until we reach a some level of self-realization, we can't understand that I'm not my body. So we go through life acting as over our body. And if we become devotees of Krishna, we purify the body that we believe that we are. Right without ever letting go of the sense that I am this body and I am actually spirit soul. There's a line, a, 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 a slight passage between the jiva and the body that we identify with, material, because we're marginal. And I like to quote Kahil Gabran, who said about marriage, be close, but not so close that the winds of heaven cannot pass between you. 
What does it mean? What? What does that mean? It means that a husband and wife can get so close that they're stuck together. Hmm. There's no space. No no individuality. Hmm. But the way Cahill Gabron looked at it is the woman is an individual female person who loves a man who is an individual human person, individual person, and they're married, and the temptation, because marriage leads to physical intimacy, it leads to them getting stuck together. And then that becomes a problem because the man can't be like the woman, and the woman can't be like the man. She's a woman, he's a man, just like Radha and Krishna are male and female. Right. So in that case, he said, be close, meaning don't be sit on opposite sides of the rooms or different parts of the house. Be close, but not so close that the winds of heaven, meaning divine energy, divine breath, cannot pass between you. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Did you get it? Did you get it? I got it now. Yes. So I like to use that example between the jiva and the body. Be close, but not so close that the winds of heaven cannot pass between you. That means there is a minute distance capable of sustaining a wind. So if you can be the soul and look through that wind at the body, you will understand that you are not the body and you will never Mm. be the body. You are the soul watching the body. But everyone, including most people in every context of every temple, are speaking like a refined body. They are acting as though they are the the physical person that they were born as. And they say, I'm not my body of spirit soul. And then they purify their body by chanting and vegetarian and regulated principles and everything like that. But what they don't realize is there's another step. And at that step, they can step outside of their body and look at their body as though it were a vehicle like a car. And they are not the car. I don't, I'm not a car. I have a car. I am the driver and I have a car. So the difference between I am the driver and I have a car, those two statements, the winds of heaven have to pass between those two concepts for it to become tolerable to people like us. So you are saying that... Everybody's struggling. How do I become conscious that I'm the soul? And that is ridiculous because he's saying, how do I become conscious that I am the soul. Yeah. Well, first of all, give up the idea that I want to find out how to become the soul because I am the soul. (laughs) Why are you saying, how do I? And I have a body. That you just caught red-handed. You're going to jail and maybe to the guillotine or electric (laughs) in in the electric chair. Why? You're guilty. What am I guilty of? Being the body, you idiot. You just confess to being the body. How do Mm. I find the soul? Well, who the F is talking? The body or the soul? Soul is talking. The soul is is actually talking. Prabhupada says consciousness is the indicator of the soul. But the soul is acting as though it is the body acting, asking about the soul. He said, wait a minute, dude. If you want to ask about the soul, are you not asking about yourself? And the guy gets scared because he doesn't, can't relate to that. Right? He can't relate to, he can't relate to the soul. You're not asking about yourself. You're not asking about yourself. Oh, yeah. You can say, how about... You're not how asking I, about the soul. Yeah, the soul. But you can't ask about the soul without automatically and, and secretly 
declaring that you are not asking about yourself. You're not asking. If you ask about the soul, it means you're not the soul. You're objectifying the soul. And if you stop to think of it, if I am the soul, I can't objectify the soul. Right? How can I yeah. objectify myself? Right. Yes. You know, yeah, where is... does that, where, where, where's the math on that one? <laughs> right. <laughs> Try. Anyone else uh, w uh, have any, cl uh, need any clarification or Surya? Surya Prabhu? Manu Prabhu? Mahaprabhu Das? Good. You, there? you good? Try. This is Spiritual Life 101. Yeah. I love it. You love so it? Spiritual Life yeah. 101 means I don't ask about the soul. I ask I'm about sorry. myself. Now yeah. you can see it that in practically all the Shastras, including like what Prabhupada himself wrote, he acts as though it's reasonable to ask about the soul. And that simple reason is people don't have a slight, even the slightest, the slightest indication in their consciousness that they are the soul. I mean, how can I say that? I want to say, I, meaning the guy that looks in the mirror and shaves, looks in the mirror and saying, I would like to know about my soul. <laughs> uh, <laughs> How much more preposterous can that get? <laughs> right. A cl classic bodily conception. Joy. Yeah. So, if I say I, the first thing we in this meeting need to do is say, when I say I, I do not refer to anything except the soul. And I speak from the soul watching the body go through its amazing convolutions and contortions. A machine. Prabhupada refers to the human body as a machine in the Bhagavad Gita. The soul is riding the material energy as though on a machine, is his quote from the Bhagavad Gita. Yes, it is. Uh -huh. right, right. So what does he mean on a machine? Well, anyone with the, you know, India was occupied by the British. When they say a machine, they refer to an automobile. Yeah, so when he said the soul is being carried by the material energy as though on a machine, it's like it's being carried by the material energy as though riding in a car. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. That's, and I'm not trying to make anything up. This is obvious. It's not make up a bolt. When the Prabhupada says something, just because he says it, if we quote it, we won't even really understand it. On a machine, what sort of machine? A pencil sharpener, what sort of machine? You know? The body. But no, yeah, no, automobile. Automobile, yes. And that's why I like to say, I don't have a, I don't, I'm not a car. I, I am the driver and I have a car. Mm. <clears throat> that's like saying, I am the soul and I have a body. So anyone who says, I am the soul and I have a body is talking from the absolute platform, whether or not he is able to handle that experience right off the bat. Does that make sense? Yeah. Abu, <coughs> yeah. where does uh, 
uh, where does the mind comes then what like we are the soul and our body is the machine then what about our mind the mind yes we are the, the soul where does the mind yes the mind is your unfaithful girlfriend <laughs> the mind wants to not be the mind and the soul are together in the heart next to the paramatma of the jeev of the living entity living being not the living entity the living being the living entity is in the heart of the living body or the animated body some sits hard and really even alive so the <clears throat> mind goes out birth after birth and this is something i like everyone on this call to really pause for a moment and contemplate mm. just imagine how many bodies there are on the, you know in how many bodies are inside your body but how many bodies there are say in your neighborhood or on planet earth even or in the universe for that matter yeah think of how many, many bodies. bodies there are which body doesn't identify with the shape and limitations of that body which which soul that i'm saying doesn't identify with the body or well, only the self realized soul yeah and there are scarce as hens teeth yes <laughs> the the liberated soul yes that's why he's called liberated liberated from what from bodily conception so everyone has a shape in their body right everyone who's a jiva who could be any shape imaginable right is not every shape imaginable it's the shape you're you're in right now you're inside of a body and you're on the zoom call and whatever body shape you have is your body shape and you identify oh that's me but when you die you take another one and it's a completely different shape so what i'm saying is the mind completely absorbs into the shape of the present body and when you die it completely absorbs into the shape of your new body and after that another body after that another body the dog walker can become a dog doesn't know the difference <clears throat> You see the dog walker becomes the dog how does he know he was a dog walker you know and the um, the the woman dies and becomes a man how does she know she was a woman the murderer dies and becomes a victim of endless murders how does he know that he was a murderer all he knows is he's being murdered birth after birth so that is what the mind does and for that reason it's absolutely essential to withdraw the mind from the objects of the senses that's stated in the bhagavad gita withdraw the mind from the objects of the senses because if you don't you will go on birth after birth assuming that the body you take is you and that will be you will never become a liberated soul ever does that make sense yes what what does it mean withdraw the mind from the objects of the senses no, i'm sorry what does it mean what does it mean to go ahead bhanu withdraw the mind from the objects of the senses i could not withdraw that. withdraw the mind from the sense objects what does it mean oh it means that you have the power it once the soul isn't a victim of the mind assumption that the soul is the body you see we take bodies because we wanted to enjoy so we take a body that is the best we can take <clears throat> if i'm a dog i want to be the best dog if i'm a cat i want to be the best cat if i'm a germ i want to be the most dominant germ so we try to dominate in the body that we take 
So we're drawing from the objects of the senses, Bhakti Sarantha put it, take a stick and beat your mind, Yeshu, every morning 50 times with a shoe, beat the mind, and at night 50 times the with a stick. With a okay. stick. And why? Because you have to get the mind to, once the soul realizes he's not the body, he's standing there aghast, seeing the mind identifying with the body. He says, no, don't do it. And the mind is having too much attachment to the body to want to let go. So you take a stick, a, a, a shoe, and you beat it. Ow, ow, ow. And you drag it back out of the body. Why did you do that? Because you're not that body. Oh, I want to be in the body. No, bang, bang, bang. You can't be in the body. And then the no, 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 time, no, 50 times on the stick. Beat, beat, beat. Ow, ow, ow. You can't go back into the body. So the mind I, and the soul can be separate from the body and then observe that the body doesn't is not conscious in and of itself. So, Narana Ryan Prabhu. Yes. Um, I went uh, and I because uh, I I remember hearing a quote like that, like uh, by uh, Sarasvati Thakur, like that. And I went to go review oh. the quote, and it said not. It didn't say just fifty times. It said beat your beat your mind a hundred times in the morning with your shoe, and beat your mind a hundred times in the evening with the broomstick. Really? Yes. I've heard both. So hundred, okay, hundred times with the shoe. And at night, a hundred times on the broomstick. Great. Yeah. So, the, so the, this fifty so is that means enough. What the bottom? The purport to that is beat the crap out of your mind until it doesn't as end up over the body. Yeah, yeah. I I don't mean just to dry correct, but I was no, just no, saying no. That's, it, to uh, emphasize how much you have to like beat your <laughs> beat your mind. <laughs> Yeah, and it is your mind, not the body's mind. But the mind identifying with the body then tries to drag the soul into it. It's like a, a girl finding a secret place to hide wants to drag the attractive male in there with her. Young woman wants to drag the attractive male in there with her and then identify with that place. Well, no, don't go. Drag her out. Don't dr let her drag you in. You see, mm. so you're the mind, you're the soul, and drag the mind out of the body hundred times of the shoe in the morning and the daytime, and a and hundred times at night with a broomstick. Mm. <laughs> so let, let's do that. So, um, <laughs> so that answers, I uh, should answer Bonner's question, no? But you've heard that before, haven't you, Bonner? I'll beat Banu if Banu doesn't beat his mind. <laughs> I'll be Donald and Donald beats me. <laughs> they got a taser too. Yeah, I got a taser too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll taser you, Banu. It'll be a guy out of control. Come and on, mind. You should use a foot fo football shoe with cleats on it, those iron spikes around it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Beat your mind with cleats. And you should take your broomstick and make it heavy by having a witch sitting on it. So you beat your mind with a hundred times with a broomstick with a witch sitting on it, which will hurt a lot more because witches are fast. Right, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but like the basic seven. idea is the basic idea is unmistakably there, right? Jai Bhanu Prabhu, any any more questions or we'll end it here? It's eleven thirty one. We started late, but we had a good discussion. Anyone? Please. Why such Hari, a well, complicated I mean thing to do for getting senses out of the mind? Yes. Why not more a practical Who's speaking yes. who, who's speaking? Bhanu Krishna Das. Bhanu. Bhanu. A bhanu knows this, I thought, no? Hundred times, I mean, hmm? 
<laughs> you have to beat it 100 times, you say. Yeah, if you're going to beat with a broomstick, don't get your broom from the 99 cent store. It will probably break. You want to get a bamboo <laughs> stick. A nice yeah. bamboo, like a loss, like, you know? Lucky, yeah. yeah, you need lucky. lucky. Yeah. <laughs> Each one of us in this store has to do it. It's not for me. Really. That's more for you. <laughs> you. Go home and you also do it. No, I'm in my car. I'll do it in my car. So, can we conclude out of this meeting that we are not the body, that we are approaching the position of speaking as the soul, not about the soul. Mm. Can, right. can, we, can we all agree? Definitely. Do you like that idea? Haribo. Amen. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Amen, you said, you, you know what it is in Hebrew? Amen is sort of the Christian way. Amen. Amen. Uh, no, Amen. Amen is how you say Amen. Amen. And why? Because Amen means like Certified to be true. It's sort of like amen. the, yeah, amen. I used to hear that from Jewish people, old, old, very old Jewish people when I was a little baby, little kid. I said, amen, amen. I said, why can't you say amen? Just like everybody else says, you know? Certified to be true. It's like amen. And then some idiot in Congress ended his prayer for Congress saying, ah men and ah women. What the? Can you imagine the moronic nature of that comment? Instead of saying, ah men, this is, you know, well, you know how in the, uh, the Arabian Nights, how they would say so when something was extremely true, they, this is Islamic thinking, how it's extremely true, you say, it should be written in gold upon stone. Hmm. And and gold upon stone means lapis lazuli, a very yeah. precious stone, a somewhat precious stone, uh, written on with gold upon stone. So that's the what Amun means. It should be written with gold upon stone. It is God, ah. God's, God's word, not men and women. Okay. Amen, all, all women. Next will be all men, all women, all sex changes, <laughs> all neutral gender, all bisexuals, all children, <laughs> <laughs> all cat, all dog, all species, all mammals, all reptiles. Well, you got to be inclusive, no? You see, men and women, you got to keep going. But anyhow, better to say carved in gold upon stone by saying Amen. Meaning that's it. By from God's point of view. The Christians sort of mess it up because they say Amen at the end of a prayer. But it's sort of like now we have spoken God's truth or something of that sort. But they don't really tie it into a bundle by saying that's been gone through. Perfectly, we have the algorithm in a straight jacket, so Amen, and there it is, stays that way. <laughs> okay, Prabhu's, Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Prabhu, you look so completely enlightened, it's just hard to explain. Ma Prabhu Ki Jai. It tells me that you were a devotee in your previous life. Jai. Celebrate. Yeah. Okay. Hare Krishna Prabhu. See you guys tomorrow. Jai. Wait, wait. Uh, is, what's that guy in the picture? Hanumat Prashad? Hanumat Prashad? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's okay. name is Hanuman something. Hanuman something, yes, yes, now I remember. Han Hanuman Praiska or something like oh, that. Maybe it was maybe it was just Hanuman. 
Yeah, I think it started with the H, Hanuman. I think it's Hanuman. Hanuman Swami or something. He was yeah. Hanuman Swami. Yes. The, you know, then he became Hanuman Swami. Hanuman. And then he changed back to his Karmi name from Canada. Yeah, yeah. Uh, BC, right? British. Not BC, from... Um, not BC. It is uh, the, the, the French part of Canada. Mm-hmm. Was or, was he, or was he from BC? Was he from Montreal? We'll find out. I'll find out and let you know. Okay. Now, Hanuman, that's what his name is. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Glory to Prabhupada. Jai, all the Lord is to Prabhupada. And if anyone is interested in how to make ghee, uh, Ramachandra Prabhu has a series of of, of photos that I sent him on how to make ghee. Jaya, I'll forward it to everyone on the WhatsApp group. Yeah. WhatsApp group, it's coming. Ghee All right. improves your brain tissue. Hare Krishna. Jaya. Hare Krishna. I hate 